Hey guys, what's up? It's Mark. Welcome back to an episode two of On My Bookshelf, a little series where I'm talking about some of my favorite books on my bookshelf. Uh, this episode I'm calling the Wendell Berry episode, and if you know anything about me, you know I'm a huge fan of Wendell Berry. Uh, Berry is a, an American novelist, philosopher, poet, uh, environmental activist, cultural critic, and he's also a farmer. He's an older gentleman, still alive, uh, living in a small town um, in Kentucky, Port Royal, Kentucky, and he's lived on a farm and farmed that land for almost 50, 60 years. Um, so he's written a lot of things, fiction, nonfiction, poetry. Um, so I'm gonna start with, uh, I have a lot of his books. Many of my favorites of his, I don't have with me because I've given them away. So. Um, I'm gonna start with his fiction. So he wrote a, um, a whole series of books called the Port Williams series. And each book, um, it's about a fictional small town very similar to, uh, to the town that he lives in, Port Royal. Um, and each book in the series is typically from the perspective of a different person who lives in the town. So. Uh, my two favorites in this series are Jaber Crow and Hannah Coulter. Uh, I don't have them with me because I've given them to other, I've loaned them to friends. And uh, if you have my copies, please return them because uh, those are two of my favorite books of all time. Uh, but Jaber Crow is about the town barber. Uh, Hannah Coulter is uh, a mom and uh, a wife and just about her life. Um, and it's really, the whole series is just amazing. I have here um, a few of the other books in the series. This is Nathan Coulter, um, Hannah's husband, and this, this one's called That Distant Land, and it's a, uh, a series of stories dating back to the 1800s about that same town, Port William. Um, and this is something that Barry wrote about this series. He said, I have made the imagined town of Port William its neighborhood and membership in an attempt to honor the actual place where I have lived. By means of the imagined place over the last 50 years, I have learned to see my, my native landscape and neighborhood as a place unique in the world, a work of God, possessed of an inherent sanctity that mocks any human valuation that can be put upon it. The only thing I try to accomplish in fiction is to show how people act when they love each other. So you hear in, in that quote uh, something that comes up a lot, a theme that comes up a lot in the, the Port William series, which is this idea of membership. What does it mean uh, to be a part of, uh, of a community? Um, and I have to say, it's, they're one of the, my favorite books of all time. Every, starting several years ago, uh, when I read Hannah Coulter for the first time, I said, not only am I gonna read a Wendell Berry book every, all of his books, but I'm gonna read a Wendell Berry book every single summer, because um, I think they they work, they match up really well with summertime. Uh, and, and that's one thing that, that really draws me to his books, is um, just the kind of community uh, and membership that he depicts uh, in this small farming town that these people have for one another. Um, so I highly, highly encourage you to check out Hannah Coulter, Jaber Crow, uh, also Nathan Coulter, That Distant Land. If you're looking to get into the series, it, it, you can read them in any order. I would suggest I always suggest starting with Hannah Coulter because it's pretty short. Um, it's shorter, much shorter than Jaber Crow, and if you like the style of it, because it's they're very different books. They're not really plot driven. It's just they're written like memoirs, but they're just full of so much. Uh, beauty and wisdom and humor. Um, I just adore them. So check out Hannah Coulter first. And if you have my copy of Hannah Coulter and J. R. Crow, please bring it back. Uh, now he's also written a lot of nonfiction. Um, the the only one that I've read so far is called What Are People, People For? Essays by Wendell Berry. Um, and then this is another one that I picked up recently called The Art of Loading Brush, which I just love this book cover. It's amazing. But um, like I said, you know, this one says new agrarian writings. Um, Barry is a farmer and he's written a lot about the relationship between humans and the land and 
um, a lot of times he's sort of uh, lamenting the fact that we've lost uh, uh, a we've lost a sense of um, kinship with the land uh, and that we just simply you know use it for resources and uh, and because of that it you know has degraded and eroded over the years so um, pretty fast he also has a really hilarious essay in here called why I'll never buy a computer uh, which is still true to this day he doesn't own a cell phone he doesn't own a computer he uh, writes everything I want to say freehand or either either that or on an old typewriter uh, and then his wife Tanya um, is sort of his editor uh, and I think she maybe puts it into the computer but um, really really uh, interesting just amazing human being uh, and then also I love his poetry so this is what I want to focus on a little bit today is um, he's written a ton of amazing poetry but this is called a timbered choir and it's um, the subtitle is the Sabbath poems from 1979 to 97 so every Sabbath every Sunday um, Barry would just kind of walk his property walk into the woods and write a poem um, and this is originally what I um, this was like what I was doing for Lent uh, was to read one of these poems every single day um, and I think they're actually really perfect for for the time for the season that we're in um, so I want to read you a poem here it's called uh, the Amish economy we live by mercy if we live to that we have no fit reply but working well and giving thanks loving God loving one another to keep creation's neighborhood and my friend David Klein told me it falls strangely on Amish ears this talk of how you find yourself we Amish after all don't try to find ourselves we try to lose ourselves and thus are lost within the found world of sunlight and rain where fields and gr are green and then are ripe and the people eat together by the charity of God who is kind even to those who give no thanks. In morning light, men in dark clothes go out among the beasts and fields, lest the community be lost. Each day they must work out the bond between goods and their price. The garden, weeded by sweat, is flower bright. The wheat shocked in shorn fields. Clover is growing where wheat grew. The crib is golden with the gathered corn. While in the world of the found selves, lost to the sunlit, rainy world, the motor driven cannot stop. This is the world where value is, abstract and prey on things, and things are changed to thoughts that have a price. Cost plus greed minus fear equals price. Maury Tallinn thus laid it out. The need to balance greed and fear affords no stopping place, no rest, and need increases as we fail. But now in summer dusk, a man whose hair and beard curl like spring ferns sit under the, sits under the yard trees at rest, his smallest daughter on his lap. This is because he rose at dawn, cared for his own, helped his neighbors, worked much, spent little, kept his peace. So uh, I hope you'll check out something by Wendell Berry. Like I said, I can't recommend his stuff enough. Uh, his fiction, Hannah Coulter, Jaber Crow, any other books in the Port Williams series, his nonfiction, if you're into more agrarian writing, uh, but also especially his poetry. So thanks so much for watching and look forward to talking with you again soon.